So let's say you start at $5 an hour. Here's what everybody has the opportunity to climb the ladder. Now first, all you need is what? A chance. That's all everybody needs is a chance and a start and now education as to how to take advantage of your chance, how to get started and use your education to move up this ladder speaking financially. Now there's a lot of ways to grow, but speaking financially, this is the deal. So you start at $5 an hour. Now the first key is how do you increase the $5? And there's several philosophies to increasing the $5. Here's number one. Uh, wait for them to raise the minimum wage. Right? Wouldn't that be one philosophy? Now, the last time it took how many years? Several years to raise the minimum wage, which is okay. I'm not saying it isn't okay. It's one way to get an increase in uh, income is to wait for the minimum wage. Okay, here's the next philosophy to wait for a raise, which is certainly legitimate. Now the question is, how often do the raises come? Every six months maybe, one year, they do what, a review? What if you miss the review? Well, you gotta wait another six months or maybe a year. So that might take quite a while to go from five, let's say, to six. Here's another philosophy, go on strike. Here's the philosophy we call by demand, to demand more. And if you don't give me more, I'll go on strike. I won't work, which is one philosophy, to get more by demand. Now, here's the problem with demand. Make the note. You can't get rich by demand. You might get a few more pennies. You might get an extra dollar. You might get an extra benefit or something, but you can't get rich by demand. Here's why. Not that it isn't America, and not that it isn't that economically now we're doing incredibly well. But here's why you can't get rich by demand. It's the wrong philosophy. And here's what would be tragic all your working life, to live in the right country and have the wrong philosophy. So you can't get rich by demand. Then how could you get rich in America? It's very simple. Change your philosophy. And what would be the new philosophy? Answer. You get rich by performance, not by demand. Now, my mentor says, some people don't just make $5 an hour. They've moved up to six. How easy would it be to get to six? Probably pretty easy. If you work for McDonald's, they paid you $5 an hour hauling out the trash. If you whistle while you haul out the trash, they'll pay you $6 an hour. Right? Here's an unusual person. They deserve $6 just because of their attitude. Wear the hat, say yay, McDonald's. So for that, you get an extra dollar an hour because the company recognizes, hey, it looks like this is going to be an oncoming person. So it's not that difficult to go from five to six, but here's what's interesting. Some earn $50 an hour, 10 times as much. How could you multiply your income by 10? One, you probably couldn't do it waiting for a raise. Certainly you couldn't do it waiting for them to change the minimum wage. And you certainly couldn't do it by demand. Because usually when they make demands, they don't demand that you multiply my income by 10. People don't go on strike for multiplying their income by 10, usually, right? It's just a little increase. So, how could you go from five to 10? Interesting. But that's not the end of it. Can you think of somebody that makes $500 an hour? My Beverly Hills attorney, yes. I think you can think of some, right, that make $500 an hour. Now, 500 multiplies by 10 again. Not just once from $5 to 50. But from 50 to 500 is multiplying by 10 again. Can you multiply by 10 and then multiply by 10? And the answer is yes. One, living in the right country is an advantage. But here's the greatest advantage, having the right philosophy. Now, $500 an hour is not the end of the story. Would a company pay someone $26 million for one year's work? And the answer is yes. They do it all the time, right? Not because this guy went on strike. For the, that's not how he gets the 26 million. A change and a shift in philosophy here starts to change everything. Now, my mentor said, you can climb this ladder, Mr. Rohn, as high as you wish to climb it. And we're just talking economics now. There's a lot of other values to go for, but speaking economically, you can climb this ladder as high as you wish to climb it if you'll follow this philosophy. And here's what he said. You, you that have been around for a while have heard me say it. He said, learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. 
Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. I got the message, age 25. Then he added, if you work hard on your job, you can make a living, which is noble. If you work hard on yourself, you could make a fortune, which is exciting. I had never heard that kind of philosophy before. Working harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work hard on your job, make a living, which is fine. Work hard on yourself, make a fortune, which is super fun. Or working hard on yourself starts to multiply your value to the marketplace. So we're talking about bringing value and being valuable to the marketplace. And this is the key. We don't get paid for the time. We get paid for the, for the value. Then he put it in the form of a philosophy that I've been teaching now all these years, which is so important. And now let me give you that philosophy. He said, success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue, chase, run after. Success is something you develop, something you become. You attract success. Here's the theme of leadership. To attract attractive people, you must be attractive. To attract skillful people, you must be skillful. To attract committed people, you must be committed. So the whole key to unlock all the treasures, whether it's economic treasures or spiritual treasures, financial, social, personal, every way you can possibly think of, is by your own personal development. And then he added one more, which is so important. Here it is. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. The major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here. The major question to ask on the job is what am I becoming here? Not what am I getting, what am I becoming? So it's very important what you become because what you become attracts. If you become cynical, you attract cynicism. What you become attracts. So this whole subject of personal development was so vitally important to me. It changed my life. I was a millionaire by age 31. And that was just the economic part of it. it. Took me six years from age 25 to age 31. It was unbelievable. So, right country, but a refinement of philosophy is what's important. I was telling a group of people of a study that was conducted. Dr. Larry Darcy, who wrote a book called Recovering the Soul, he said, human beings are the only living species that has achieved the dubious distinction of dying or having a stroke or a heart attack on a certain day. If you ask most people, what would you say the primary cause of why people would have a heart attack or stroke. Many people will say, well, because they smoke cigarettes or because of high cholesterol or because of stress or because of obesity. And all of those things are contributing factors. But ladies and gentlemen, more heart attacks take place in this country on Monday morning between 8 and 9 a.m. That's when the majority of people who have their first heart attacks have them. 85% of the American public, according to recent studies, are going to jobs that they hate, working on jobs that do not challenge them. They get sick thinking about going. Migraine headaches. After the Sunday afternoon football game, or 60 minutes, the anxiety began to build. And come Monday morning, they drop dead of a broken heart. Some of you ought to think about not going to work on Monday. <laughs> think about that. People are literally dying to go to work. <laughs> because, see, when you go to a job and, and you already know how far you can go, you can already see that proverbial glass ceiling. It's like going to a movie when you've gone in in the middle of the movie. 
and you've seen the end and, and you sit there to, for it to start all over again, but something is missing. You know what the outcome is going to be. You can't get excited about going through that movie all over again. Am I correct? See, when you're going someplace and you already know how much you're going to make, you already know how far you can go. You're in a dead end position. It erodes your self-esteem. It lowers your sense of yourself. It creates an inner turmoil. It creates an emptiness in you. So I say that your life is worth finding what it is that you're supposed to do.